what's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm that first talking head, Rick. The other talking head is Big Show. What's going on, Show? What's up, buddy? How are you? Um, uh, I'm doing good. So far, so good. I can't complain. I really don't need to because I know it's people worse off than me. What's yes. good in your world? Nothing. Hey, we same share the old, same, same world. Old. So, um, just a, a quick one for all you guys out there. Uh, if you're not familiar with this podcast, we talk about anything and everything. We try to be informative, humorous, uh, give our takes, however unique they may be. And the reason why we call it Slightly Warped, sometimes we will go out there. But, hey, that's what we do. And uh, we've been talking for the past several weeks about uh, Game of Thrones and each week focusing on either a different season or as we did in season eight, we broke it down episode by episode and we've uh, reached the apex here. We are on episode six of season eight. I believe it was called uh, The Iron Throne and uh, we're going to discuss that with you and I've got a few questions for Big Show and these same questions that I'm going to ask him you know, I want you guys to jump in the comments and let me know how you feel and what you think about them as well. You can always hit us up in the comments of your podcast feed. If you're watching on YouTube, definitely hit those comments. Or you can send us an email at the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. Big yeah. show. So uh, the Iron Throne. Now, do we want to break it down section by section? Do you want to talk about what you liked or disliked about it. Uh, talk to me about that episode. Mm, this, I, I didn't like the episode at all. Really? <laughs> yeah, um, I think it ended kind of stupid. Um, you know, John, John takes one for the team and takes care of Daenerys for her, uh, for her, uh, shenanigans she did in the last episode yeah in case you guys uh weren't around last episode she went nanas and uh decided to just level uh uh what was it king's landing king's landing yes thank you and uh yeah somewhere under that rubble was uh cersei and unfortunately a lot of civilians took that hit too and uh she basically destroyed the kingdom, pretty much that she was trying to trying to run, and Tyrion basically told her to fuck off, and she put him in a dungeon. Oh, that's right, that's right. Because um, he threw his hand, the hand symbol, back at her, saying that she basically overstepped her bounds. So it kind of went back to the Mad King era of the realm. Where uh, Aemon Targaryen, I think, I think it's either Aegon or Aemon, one of those two, because uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of family members that are named the same, like Aemon the Third, Aegon the Fifth, or whatever. But yeah. one of those was the Mad King, and uh, you know, basically just burned people for fun, you know, alive with his dragon, that type of thing. And uh, Daenerys basically went plum idiot. Uh, John was also, um, imprisoned because he killed Daenerys in this episode. Uh, Worm, Grey Worm wanted to kill John. They were all in that little, they had the group of people, I think it was Sansa and, 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 uh, Aya, uh, the chick from the Storm Islands, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Theon's sister. A uh, bunch of other ones that have been that have survived the war. They were the quote unquote council to decide what's next. And uh, one of my favorite parts of the episode was when uh, they were basically saying John should be let free. You know, blah blah blah. And Grey was like, "No, he has to die." And I think it was Theon's sister that said he because she was a supporter of Daenerys. Said something to the fact about, 
you know, that, yeah, they should go ahead and kill John. And I said, one more person that talks about killing my brother, I'm going to slit their throat. It was just a great line the way she that, said it. Yeah, she delivered it very yeah. dry and very direct. And and when she said it, I mean, if any other character had said that, there's some gray area. When she said right. it, you knew. Yeah, there was, and it. nobody said anything. So that was kind of cool. But, um, it pretty much was just a quick, you know, tidy up of the whole series uh, to me. I mean, yeah, there were some dialogues that, you know, you realize that Sansa basically said that the North is going to stay free, its own thing. It's not going to be part of the seven kingdoms. It's going to, so now there's six kingdoms. Um, and they voted um, Brandon, Bran Stark mm -hmm. uh, as the new king, the three eyed raven. Uh, mostly because, you know, he has all the histories of what happened and all they do, which I think isn't necessarily a bad choice because um, he didn't want it. But, you know, he's not going to have any heirs. You know, he's not going to get married. He's not going to. There's a lot of things that can happen in the future of that make-believe world. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the parallels between Bran and John, neither of them wanted it at all. And, no. and, and, and that's what really makes a good ruler. Uh, and, and, you know, when you're into the, you know, second, third, fourth season of the show, you think Daenerys would have made a great queen. But as you got into this eighth, se eighth season, you knew... No, it wasn't going to turn out the way she promised. And it didn't. She died. Oh, well. Um, I think that the quote-unquote council that they got together came together a little too quick. A little too quick and easy. What do you mean? Like when they were deciding on who the king was? Yeah. Well, I, that was just everybody that survived. That was the head of their particular castle. Is all that was. So you like you had the Theon sister. She's the leader of the Iron Men. You had. Uh, oh Tully. Uh, uh, the one that was. Imprisoned at the Red Wedding. You know mm. the one that he would. Yeah, he, yeah. You know you had all the. All those people were quote unquote. Uh, heads of their. Respective castles. Okay. Yeah so the highest ranking people. Left. Yeah. That that basically, you know, could say, yes, I think we should vote this particular person ahead or whatever. Yeah. Now, I do like how they came to the conclusion of what to do with John. Kill him, set him free, kill him, set him free. No, leave him alive, send him to the wall. Well, I mean, but he didn't go to the wall. He went past it. He's back. He's He's in the wild. He's in the wild with the wildlings. He's north of the wall. Okay. So they they voted to send him north then, not to the wall. Yeah, and when you and that's how this that's how the show ends is him going through the wall and heading out with all of his wildling friends, okay. you know, like it's, Giants Bane and all them. It's been a minute since I've seen that episode. Cuz there's thinking, nothing I was thinking that he was to supposed to go anymore. to the wall but then decided at the last minute I'm going to go past it himself. Okay. Yeah, and and there's nothing to fear out there anymore there's no white walkers there's nothing so they could you know create a pretty good life for themselves there very true so basically he probably became the king of the wildlings the king in the north you know the king of the free folk or whatever what mance raider was that's probably what he turned into be yeah um i did like that um and correct me if I'm wrong, Arya left as well because she wanted to yep, see she... what was west of Westeros. Correct. Because right. okay. all cause all the all the maps don't stop there. She wants to know what's past the maps. So it would be interesting to know what goes on further in her story, you know, if we ever get those last two books. I don't think the last two books are going to do that. I think it's going to end similar uh, to the way the show is, just maybe a little bit differently. I don't think they're going to go 
past Daenerys's death and all that and Bran being the king to, you know, keep going. I don't think they're going to further the story. It's going to end after Daenerys takes her throne, just hmm. like in the show. Because the fifth book, I mean, they're still, Tyrion hasn't even met Daenerys yet. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that because I haven't read any of the books. I, I'm yeah. thinking that, you know, we got all the way up to, I mean, I knew HBO took some liberties and went past what was written, but I didn't know that they went that far. I, I thought we only had, you know, one book now should... The, uh, I would say the show's probably split from the book um, season... Uh, probably season seven. Hmm. Okay. Damn. Um, wow. And, and he's still got two books to write. For, first of all, when or if do you think we'll even get them? I don't know. The next book coming out is called Winds of Winter, which I'm assuming that's going to lead up to the the Battle of the White Walkers. And then uh, the last book is like this, this, the winds of spring or the winds of summer, or some stupid shit like that. Uh, but the winds of winter was supposed to have come out like three years ago. He just keeps adding to it. Like it's over 1500 pages right now. He just keeps writing. So I don't know. I, I don't mind reading a good, good book, but there is a such thing as too met, too much. Um, I mean, the way he writes the books, they're very intriguing. Um, the book that I disliked the most was the fourth book because at the end of book three, Tyrion killed Tywin. And then the fourth book basically introduced a bunch of new characters that you kind of knew in the show, but not really. And kind of and kind of told the story of like Sansa and Peter Baelish when she was with him. And then it also talked about um oh what do they call her? Cold heart. Anyway, Catelyn Stark, you know, she's she didn't die at the Red Wedding. She's she was brought back to life by the Red Priest or whatever. Yeah, she's but just she can't mute, talk. right? Yeah. Yeah, well, she can't talk because her throat was cut all the way to the bone, so she has no vocal cords. Um, but so there's some parts in in there. But then when book five picks up, it's it picks up right where as Tyrion was leaving the, leaving the castle. So it's kind of bass backwards a little bit, but you know, I, the fourth book really just I didn't like it a whole lot. Mm. So far, the fifth book's really good. All right. I'm going to need that next book and a promise of the final one, you know, before people lose interest. That's for damn sure. Uh, they'll never lose interest. Look at Star Wars fans. I know, but lately, Star Wars fans are at each other's throats. We got to get that Yeah, fixed. but they're not good. They're never going to lose interest. That is true. They're just going to argue. They're just going to argue about what's out, out there already. And <clears throat> although we don't have anything written in stone, we'd like we probably have to think about uh, future movies or TV shows that uh, we want to discuss in depth like this because this has really been cool. Um, if you guys have any suggestions hit us up in the comments or the emails i will say this show i believe that the failing of season eight was because some of it was a little rushed um i wish that we could have went further with daenerys's going mad Instead of it just being a snap, bam, boom, I'm going to level the city. I mean, great result, 
but I wanted to see more of that road to her demise. Um, I understand. Well, I mean, you theoretically you did. If you look at the overall picture, she felt like if, if John wouldn't have told her that he was a Targaryen, I don't think she would have done what she did. But I think the, 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 the discord between her and Sansa the whole time she was at Winterfell, okay? The losing of, of what's his nuts, Mormon, Mormont, yes. um, at the Battle of the Whites, the Long Dark Night or whatever it's called. Um, then losing her, her main chick, uh, Masande, by getting beheaded by Cersei. You know, all of that just kind of it all just escalated that it just boiled it, it was like kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back she realized that she was going to have if even if she went in when 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 king's landing's bells went to basically say that they had given up the 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 cersei's given up the throne to her basically that's i quit i give up i yield or whatever mm. and that's when she decided to keep going uh in her mind, I think she thought that even if I were to get off this dragon right now and take it, I'm still going to have to fight battles with the North. John, you know, letting the cat out of the bag, blah, 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 blah. And she just said, fuck it. I'm, if I can't have you, nobody can. That type of attitude. And I think it was a, a split moment, rash, mental breakdown. And it happened. You know, she didn't think, she just did. And we've all we've all been guilty of some stupid shit like that. But, you know, not riding a dragon and burning down entire buildings, although that might be fun depending on the on the building, but still. Um I in my in my opinion, you have seen all that leading up to it and she just exploded. She couldn't handle it no more. That's my personal opinion. I did like the way John handled it. it. It was his only play, if you ask me. What, by killing her? Yeah. Because he saw <sighs> yeah. that down the road, it was only going to get worse. Yeah, he knew once she, once the butter slid off her biscuit, like like it did, she she wasn't going to be a good ruler. No. And if she could do if she could do that on a whim, what was she going to do to him? Because she knew the truth about his true claim to the throne. That is true. Because had he wanted it, he could easily be the king. I mean, right? Because it, it's everybody still wanted. Yeah, everybody wanted it. All of King's Landing still had faith in the Targaryen name. Because Rhaegar Targaryen and all them were cool. Now, there were some Targaryens that, you know, were a few French fries short of a Happy Meal. But, uh, you know, for the most part, they they ruled well. Like, you know, the dude, the king, uh, I want to say his name is Ares. Uh, or no, Viserys in the show Dance with the Dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes place, you know, like 100 years before uh, Daenerys was born. But he ruled his, not him, but... The king before him, which I think was his brother or his father, anyway, ru ru ruled uh, King's Landing for 50 years in complete peace. No wars, nothing. So, the, you know, there's the Targaryen name built it up that they took care of their people, you know, and, and then obviously the Lannisters and the Baratheons, they kind of tore them down. Yeah. So tell me as we close this out. What letter grade would you give um, this eighth season? Season eight, I'm going to give. Man, it might have to do some some after school homework. Um, you know, I don't want to see this kid in my class next year so I'm just going to pass him basically I'm going to give it a C average um, and, 
And that's basically because the season, there were three episodes out of the six, right? There were six episodes. Yes, sir. Three episodes out of those six were really, really good. Episode two, episode three, and even the one where Daenerys slid off for Biscuit, episode five. Those were really, really good episodes. Strong episodes. Um, the other ones were meh. So they cancel each other out. C. That makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, as a whole, for the entire series, how would you rate it? The entire series, strong B plus. B plus, A minus. I, I can't let the last season completely destroy everything that it has done up to that point. But season eight was a very strong disappointment. Uh, so I would say high B, low A. Very good season, a uh, very good series, uh, especially if you like the medieval sci-fi, you know, mystical dragons and magic crap. Great show. I would agree with that. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend it to anybody who has not seen it yet. Um, even that eighth season, I mean, to me, it's it's very meh. But you're right. For every low, you get a high simply because there were only six episodes, three and three. So um, I can't. I can't. I, I I wouldn't necessarily say the eighth season was a letdown. It was just there, so to speak. Yeah, it was a little disappointing. That's that's how I would explain it. Yeah. However, I don't think there's ever been any season, any show <laughs> that ended, and everybody was like, "Oh, that was just so great! I'm I'm glad the show's finally over." <laughs> you know. Mm. Uh, I, I can't think of one. I think on every series that we're invested in, you kind of get disappointed. Yeah, there's disappointments in every show. And I'm not, see, I'm going to have to think about that before the next show and, and try to come up with some really great TV shows that overall, I was like, I would recommend to anybody and everybody. Right. But the key is that, that you en it ended and you were like, Okay, I'm cool with that. That ended very nice. They buttoned everything up. They didn't try to speed it up and everything. You know? I can think of one right off the top of my head. I don't know if you've ever seen the, I re can't. the revamp Battlestar Galactica. No. That was a damn good show. It only ran four seasons. And, and because it was so short, they didn't have time to go off the rails, jump the shark, and do stuff like that. Um it was on the sci-fi channel too. So it was only 13 episodes per season. So, you know, it wasn't that network TV where it's 22 episodes a season. So you guaranteed some stinkers. Uh, the way they ended that really ended wonderful. I would put it down as the opposite of that. What was that TV show? Lost? That was a yeah. horrible ending. This yes. was straight opposite. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, I can think of more bad endings to TV shows than I can think good. Don't know if you ever seen Dexter. Yes, actually, Dexter is one of my favorite season or series as well. Yeah, but that last episode, I was pissed. The last uh, episode in the season eight. You talking about? Yeah, whatever the final season was. And they were. Yeah, the original, not not when they brought it back. Why? Why? All right, you remember when he sailed the boat off into the storm? That... Towards the towards. That the would have yes. been perfect. Then he ends up a lumberjack somewhere. Really? Well, you knew he wasn't going to die. He's not going to kill himself. He went out there to get rid of his sister's body. That's what he did. Because he had he had uh, Deborah's body with him. Yeah, I remember he had Deb's body, but. I I just think that he kind of went out like a punk because he 
he didn't want to be with his son in Paris. He he gave him to the uh, the girl to take take with him, raise him there. I mean, why not just why not just I think it was Paris, wherever they they were supposed to meet up. What? Why not mm -hmm. just be there? And, and and since you don't want to kill anymore, just be a family man, or something like that. He, Nobody. He never said he didn't want to kill anymore. He never said that. I thought he did. I thought he said when he was taking Deb's body, this will be officially my last kill. He didn't kill her. Then I don't know what he was referring to. That's one I would have to go back and, and watch again because he, he mentioned something about a last kill. And maybe that's why I thought he was going to off himself in the storm. He, His last kill was the Dexter persona in Miami. Mm. That, that, that was, does change That was bit. his last kill. However, Dexter New Blood, he's in Alaska. Very good. It's only like seven or eight season, seven or eight episodes. I recommend you watching it. He's been trying to contain the 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 what does he call it the dark passenger yeah okay um but you know how like in the in the original series his dad was always there as like as a ghost his conscience yeah well in the in new blood deborah was the conscience so so really? she yes and then so that that was really good it was only one season and it's really good it, his son comes back his son is a teenager comes mm -hmm. back it's really good. It's re and it takes place in Alaska. Really good. Really, I, I I recommend if you haven't watched Dexter New Blood, check it out. But if you didn't know, two more series are coming off with him. Dexter: The Origin, which is going to talk about when he was a kid. Okay. That's com that actually comes out in two weeks. Starts in two weeks. Okay. And then and then they're going to uh, continue the story of modern dexter the same guy that plays him is coming back okay to play him um and i forget what it's called but yeah the i will yeah. definitely check now, those out that whole that whole season eight of dexter was disappointing i'm not gonna lie to you but seeing what i knowing what i know and all that it's it actually they actually played it perfectly so they could do all these extra spinoffs that are out now I am definitely going to go check out New Blood then. Yeah, it's def it's it's good. It's definitely good. All right, real quick switching gears, I want to go over um our uh picks for this coming week, week 13. Uh sorry right. folks, uh I will get back to our results next uh on our next show. There won't be a show next week, but we'll have one the week after. Um these start with uh, Thanksgiving games. I was wondering, why does it say Thursday? Yeah, Thursday through Thanksgiving and Sunday. Got it. So there's several Thursdays, but different Thursdays. This Thursday, as in two days from now, is the Bears at the Lions. That is Thanksgiving. God, this, this year has got me all mixed up. So it is Thanksgiving. That's why I'm seeing so many Thursday games. Anyway, yep. you know I got the Lions. Um, hold on here. Who are they playing? The Bears. The Bears, right? Yeah, yeah. Lions. Uh, then you have the second game, the Giants at the Cowboys. Who's going to suck less? I'm going to say the uh, Cowboys finally get a win at home. Yeah, I think they'll win as well. I mean, they beat Commanders last week. And then our night game. Uh, is the Dolphins at the Packers? Um, man, this is a tough one. Yes. Um, man, man, man. I'm, I'm gonna go with the Pack. Yeah, I'm. I'm. It's probably gonna be cold, and the and Dolphins doesn't play well in the cold. So I will probably also go with the Packers. Would not be surprised if Dolphins pull this out. 
true. Then we have the NFL's first official Black Friday game. And it's my team versus your team. It's not going to be a relive of Christmas Day last year. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to pull this one out. Um, we we just don't have the offensive firepower. I'm going with KC. Chiefs. Now, that brings us to actual Sunday games. At noon, Chargers at the Falcons. Mm. I'm going to say the Falcons. I'm going Chargers. Okay. That's our first different one. And then we have Pittsburgh at Cincinnati. I am going to, wow. I am going to go with the Steelers on this, but the Bengals are favored right now. Mm-mm. I'm going to go Cincinnati. Okay. Second one that's different. Arizona Cardinals are going to Minnesota to play the Vikings. I'm going to take Vikings. I'm going to take the cards. I'm swinging for the fences on this, but why not? Uh, the Colts are at the Patriots. I'm going with the Colts. Both of those teams suck ass. Exactly. Uh, you're... Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I'll go Colts. Okay. The Seahawks are no, at the Jets. No, oh, I'm no. Going, I'm going Patriots. You're going Patriots? Okay. Yep. Change that. All right. Then the Seahawks are at the Jets. I'm going Seahawks. I hope they both lose. Seahawks. The Titans are at the Commanders. Um, I'm going with the Commanders. Same. The Texans are at the Jaguars. I'm going to go with the Texans. Man, that's a tough one, too. I'm going to go Jacksonville. I'm going to say they're going to pull off the upset. Okay, Jacksonville it is. Uh, The Rams are at the Saints. I think I'm going to go with the Rams on this. I'm going Saints. You're going Saints? Yep. All right, and the Buccaneers are at the Panthers. I'm going with the Bucks. Bucks. Eagles at the Ravens. This is going to be tough. Eagles. You going with the Eagles? I'm going to go with the Ravens. Uh, the 49ers are at the Bills. I'm going with the Bills. Bills. 7 p.m. Don't know why this is the night game, but whatever. The Browns are at the Broncos. I'm going to go. Monday night. Oh, that's right. The uh, 49ers game is the uh, Sunday night game. But still, this should, be, this should be flexed out. But, uh, yeah, I'm going with the Broncos I'm... as well. Oh, no, not at all. That That's going to be a good one. That's a good game. Uh, Cleveland just beat the Steelers, and the Broncos are playing really well. That's going to be a good game. I would, I would rather probably see the national game, the Eagles and the Ravens. Yeah, but. Not a whole lot of people watch Monday night compared to the three o'clock game on a Sunday. This is true. This is true. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. We have one, two, three, four, five, six different uh, games. So, all right, we we got just over two minutes left in the show, mm-hmm. and I want to throw this out. Uh, obviously, Thanksgiving's coming up. Want to thank you for for being part of my circle, my brother. Appreciate you. Appreciate everybody that watches. But I want to tell you why I am thankful that I live in the United States of America. Found this found this show, this thing coming up. An Indi- a guy in India, right, mm-hmm. uh, came down with, with a flu or some sort, and he was pronounced dead, okay? They put him down in the freezer like they're supposed to do, 
and then they release him for the freezer to get cremated. As he was on the funeral pyre, the dude wakes up. Mm. The doctors failed to do the post-mortem stuff. They just told him to go. Uh, t- said, just go ahead. He, he's, he's dead. And, and he wakes up on the... As they're getting ready to burn this dude to a crisp. He wakes up. Now, sad thing is he died like two days later, but he uh, he's a deaf mute, so he couldn't communicate. Mm. So, wow. Uh, just glad just glad that I live in America. So shit like that doesn't happen. <laughs> we hope, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take us on out of here, show. Hey, guys, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving. Eat lots of turkey and, uh, you know, stay blessed. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Amen. And I'm thankful for you, show, and I'm thankful for all you guys for paying attention to us. You guys take care.